thanks for your patience guys we'll we'll start within few minutes as uh, more participants are joining they are still joining the session so thanks thanks for waiting we'll we'll start in few minutes thank you Thank you, Imanshu, for putting your questions in the chat box. Definitely, we'll take the questions. The Komal ma'am will explain you ahead in the session. Also, anyone having any queries or question, you can put it in the chat box. So, speaker can take your questions and queries. Thank you. Okay, so good to start. Good morning to one and all. We welcome you to the certification session on PL200. Myself Chaitali, your host for this session. Okay, so before starting up with the session, let's have a small introduction about our today's event sponsor, Synergetics. Synergetics is one of a kind corporate learning solution company which help any industry to get the relevant technology solutions and helps to be on the top of this competition. We are not only restricted to this uh, trainings, uh, but also we provide certification training, which help every indi individual professional to succeed in this competitive world. Here are some of the solution offered by Synergetics. Onboarding solution, reskilling solution, certification, certification plus add on, cloud adoption, architecting, 
practice playbook latest technology training and emerging technology training now today's session is organized by atc community and sponsored by synergetics and microsoft our atc community is open to all the people who are interested in microsoft cloud technologies you just need to follow our meetup group which are an emerging technology community for all azure tech community pune for pune kas azure tech community gujarat for gujarati tech community then we have azure tech community nagpur for nagpur kas you just need to install the meetup app on your phone and follow our communities so you will get the updates regarding the upcoming event uh, meetups and webinars now small code of conduct that you all need to follow please note that you are not allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording if you need the recording just uh, simply subscribe to our youtube channel the youtube channel link will be provided to you all in the chat box go ahead now the session flow as you can see the session flow will go uh, accordingly go ahead yeah today uh, speaker for the session is ms komal sharma she is microsoft uh, 365 solution expert and microsoft certified trainer also working with synergetic as a trainer our agenda for the session as you can see on the screen go ahead then we have journey path for related designation like it is for it pros developers the data analytics then we have certification portfolios go ahead keep moving go ahead with the slide mr lakshmi yeah thank you then we have the learning path specifically for pl 200 as well which will be brief to you all by komal ma'am ahead in the session go ahead yeah you can see the journey path for pl 200 as you all know we are providing the moc for pl 200 the microsoft official courseware for your exam preparation please note only first 50 responses on the moc activation form will receive the moc for pl 200 i repeat the first 50 responses on moc activation form which will be provided to you in the chat box will receive the moc for pl 200 the microsoft official courseware also we have the exam voucher at 25% discounted rate to claim the discounted exam voucher you can connect us on given mail id you can grow professionally by adding this certification we can arrange any of this fundamentals and advanced role based training trust us and will deliver the best the upcoming certification session is on az 900 it will be two half a day session on 30th and 40 14th of october from 4 pm to 8 pm the registration link will be provided to you in the chat box also we have a one day certification session on sc 400 which is on 15th of october it will be full day training 10 am to 4 pm again the registration link will be provided to you all in the chat box 
follow us on our social media platforms uh, to get the daily updates regarding the webinar workshops and more now i like to hand over the mic to komal ma'am so she can go ahead with the session thank you thanks to all thank you chaitali good morning everyone i'm just going to share my screen first Okay, so I welcome you all to PL two hundred session. That is Power Platform Functional Consultant. I'm your instructor, uh, instructor for the day, Komal Sharma. Uh, Chetali already has given my introduction. I just would like to uh, put few more points. Like uh, I am Microsoft three sixty five solution expert, and I am Microsoft certified at associate level for Microsoft Power Platform. Microsoft 365 services and Microsoft security services. Now, before starting with the journey of our Microsoft PL 200, I would like you to just put for uh, more focus first on our Power Platform uh, certification journey. That why the certification is here and what are the other certification paths we can have so that it will help you to. Uh, struck your uh, career in Power Platform. So, yeah. okay. So, when you are going to start with Microsoft Power Platform, like those who are actually interested with Microsoft Power Platform. And they want to earn certification in this field. So uh, this is the first exam that is PL 900. This is Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals. Like today we are going to have the session for PL 200. But before starting this, you must be having some fundamental knowledge about this Microsoft Power Platform. You should be having the overview of the same. OK, what are the different uh, other platforms available under this Microsoft Power Platform. So here Microsoft PL 900, it just proves that you understand the basics or the fundamental capabilities of Microsoft Power Platform. So here you can have the introduction of Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, and then Power Virtual Agents. So when you are done with your fundamentals, that means you feel like that. Yes, now we have the basic knowledge about Microsoft uh, Power Platform. Then you can move ahead. Then here you have different option to uh, move further with PL 100. PL 100 is Microsoft Power Platform App Maker Associate exam. This exam basically uh, uh, focus on how you build an app. OK, so this is basically for designing an app and automation workflow for your organization. In this uh, uh, certification exam, you will learn how you can create app and automated flows. How you can analyze and visualize data in the context of your app or your flows. And when uh, uh, if you have interest more towards the functional capabilities of consultant associate, then you can go for exam PL 200. So PL 200, this is Microsoft Power Platform functional consultant. Here uh, you will get to know how you can configure Microsoft Dataverse, how you can create apps by using Power App how to create and manage processes automation, describing what is Power Virtual Agents, how you can import and visualize data by using the data flows and Power BI, and, and defining the environmental strategies. Coming to PL 300, like if you are more interested toward the data analysis part. So here you have PL 300, that is Power BI Data Analyst Associate. This exam, will help you to plan and manage an Azure Cognitive Service Solution, how you can implement computer vision solution, 
how to implement uh, natural language processing solution and knowledge mining solution for your organization. Microsoft Power Platform Developer Associate, that is exam PL 400. This exam is uh, to help you to create a technical design, how you can configure Dataverse, how to create and configure Power App, how to extend the, your user experience, the platform, and to develop integrations. Now, PL500. PL500 is Power Automate RPA Developer Associate. Means if you are uh, more interested toward the desktop developing, okay, means like desktop automation. So here you have this exam PL500, where you will learn how to design solution for your desktop application or your web apps. OK, how to create the automation for your desktop apps and uh, web apps, how to develop the solution, how to deploy and manage the solution. So when you are on this associate level, like, OK, you are interested toward the app making or uh, the consultant or PL 300, the data analysis part or the developer associate. Now, once you are done with this associate level exam, and you want to move ahead as a expert level. You want to achieve that expert level in Microsoft Power Platform. Then here you have exam PL 600. This is for solution architect for Microsoft Power Platform. And this leads successful implementation and focus on how solution addresses the broader business. So this is what about the Microsoft Power Platform certification. So when you will be having PL 900, PL 900 will measure your skill like you have the basic understanding about the Power Platform, Power BI, Power Automate, Power App, Power Virtual Agents. And when you have understood the concept, this skills is measured, then finally you will be certified as a Microsoft Platform Fundamentals. PL 100, it measures your skills like are you able to design apps or not? Are you able to design automate workflow to create apps or automate workflow? Are you able to visualize data or analyze the data? Or you can integrate these data with your apps or your automated workflow. So when you pass your exam PL 100, after that, you will be Microsoft certified and you will become Microsoft Power Platform App Maker Associate. PL 200, it measures your skill that are you able to configure Microsoft Dataverse? Are you able to create apps by using Power Apps? Are you able to create and manage process automation or not? And then when you clear your exam PL 200, you will on the certification that is Power Platform Functional Consultant Associate. PL 300, this measure your skills like are you able to prepare the data or model the data? Are you able to visualize and analyze the data or deploy and maintain assets? After you clear your exam PL 300, you will be Microsoft Certified Power BI Data Analyst Associate. PL 400, it measures your skills like uh, are you able to create a technical design for your organization? Are you able to configure data wars? Are you able to create and configure power apps? And are you able to extend the user experience and the platform? Once you are done with this exam PL 400, you will be certified as Power Platform Developer Associate. As a developer, you would be able to design, develop, secure, and troubleshoot Microsoft Power Platform solution. PL 500, as I said, this is for Power Automate. This is for desktop applications. So here, the skill set are measured that you are able to design solutions, develop the solution, and manage the solution. So once you clear the exam PL 500, you will be Microsoft certified as Power Automate RPA Developer Associate. Now, after these certification, PL 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500, 
last to achieve the expert level you have pl 600 so after clearing pl 600 exam you will be microsoft certified power platform solution architect expert so this was your certification journey with power platform solutions I'm coming back to my PPT again. So uh, first PL 200. This exams basically measure your ability that to complete the different tasks like are you able to configure Microsoft data wars, create applications and all. So as a Microsoft Power Platform functional consultant, you are responsible for configuring apps automations and solution. The functional consultant, it promote utilization of solution within an organization and the functional consultant may perform discovery. Uh, you can engage subject matter expert and stakeholder and capture requirements and map requirement to feature. So first we will discuss the course agenda. What are the different modules and the topics we are going to cover? We have, we have the first module where we will be having the power platform overview. Module two, this is about how you are going to work with Dataverse. How you can start building data model to create and manage the processes, how you can work with AI builder, how to import and export data. Then module three, we are going to focus on Power apps and how you can create apps by using model driven apps, canvas apps or portal apps. Module four, it focuses basically on power automate. Here we will be uh, discussing about how we can build flows, how we can build business process flow, how to build a classic workflow and desktop flows. Module five, here we will work with power virtual agents. What is chatbot? How to create a chatbot? How we can configure topics here? How to automate and integrate your Power Virtual Agents chatbot with other applications? How you can configure entity? And last, we will discuss how to test and publish chatbot. Module six, it will uh, basically focus on Power BI part. We will be discussing what is Power BI capabilities here, how to create the visualization and dashboards. So I have given you the uh, introduction of PL uh, 200. So we will start with PL 200. So today's session uh, we will be uh, it will be in two parts like before the lunch and after the lunch. So before lunch we will be covering the theory part. First we will be understanding all the concepts and after the lunch I will be covering labs. Okay. So I want you guys to be uh, more interactive. Like if you have any doubt, any questions, any query, you are free to put your queries in your chat box. So let's start. So before starting with the session, anyone, any question, any query you have, you can put in the chat box or you can unmute yourself. Um, is there a prerequisite for PL 200 um, formal? I mean, I don't have um, a basic knowledge of uh, power platforms also. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I do have, but uh, not to the extent uh, what is required. So will I be able to understand PL 200 uh, much better without having uh, in-depth knowledge of the fundamentals of power platform? Yeah, uh, see, as I said, here we have Microsoft PL 900. OK, so PL 900 gives you the fundamental understanding of power platforms as this PL 200 is for associate level. OK, so of course it is expected to have the basic understanding of power platform, but uh, don't worry like if you are directly going to appear for PL 200, I recommend you to first uh, go through it's not that compulsory you have to clear PL 900, 
but yes i recommend you to have the basic understanding at least about power platform why i am saying this because when you have the basic understanding or the fundamental knowledge it would be easy for you to understand the pl200 uh, modules pl100 or any other associate level courses but yes don't worry today i will try my level best to give you the understanding about this power platform okay so as this is just the uh, like today we are hardly 4 5 hours right so in depth i would not be able to give you the understanding for the same but yes the overall concept i would like to clear for you guys and uh, i will help you out to how you can uh, appear for pl200 exams and i will be sharing some resources that will help you to prepare for the same okay yeah, but yes great. if you want to go in depth for pl200 or pl900 you can register for that course and then only you will be having the deep understanding for the course got it yeah thanks komal thank you okay anyone else any doubt any query okay no problem so let's start okay so module 1 so module 1 we will be having the overview of microsoft power platform So the agenda for the same will be, of course, the Microsoft Power Platform overview. So here in the first lesson, we will be focusing on Microsoft Power Platform. We will be having understanding about this platform. Here we will discuss about uh, Power Apps, the basic understanding, the concept, what is Power Automate, uh, Power Virtual Agents, Power BI, and Microsoft DataWorks. so power apps basically uh, as of course it's a base main part of microsoft power platform microsoft power platform when i say microsoft power platform this is a single platform that is based on important pillars these pillars are power app power bi power automate and power virtual agents and of course i am not forgetting dataverse dataverse is what the inbuilt database solution or data management service of microsoft power platform so when you are on this platform these pillars will help you to create a solution for your organization like when you actually start working on any solution first what you need you need a app or a place where you are going to interact with the end user so how you can interact here so via app like user will be using a app okay they will be uh, putting some data that will be saved in the background in your database or they will be getting some data they will be fetching some data or there may be another way for uh, having the data like we have we can have power virtual agent where we can interact with our data or we can collect some important or basic data now once we have data okay we need some space where we can put data or we can uh, manage the data so here we have microsoft data wars so that database management service i will not say only a database because this is a data management service of microsoft power platform so here you can keep your data and here you can integrate this data wars with your power app with your power virtual agent with your power bi or with your uh, power automate now of course we have discussed about the data about the app about the virtual agents now it may be that we need to analyze the data or we need to visualize the data in a way that your end user experience would be better or the way you are going to explain your data would be easier for you to make and others to understand so here you will can you can go for data visualization capability by using 
पावर बी है एंड देन यू हैव पावर ऑटोमेट लाइक अफकोर्स यू वॉन्ट दी सर्विसेस टू इंटीग्रेट ओके यू कैन हैव द कैपेबिलिटीज ऑफ ऑल प्लेटफॉर्म टूगेदर बाय द इंटीग्रेशन so this power automate will help you to automate the processes you can connect from one service to another automatically like for example if a user has put some data automatically the data should be saved in the background user should get the notification or admin should get the notification about the same so this is what the entire microsoft power platform is all about Now, as a consultant, it's your responsibility that you need to understand your customer requirement, what type of solution you are going to build. Okay, understanding the need of the end user. So, accordingly, you can build a solution, the end solution. So, starting with the Power Apps. Power Apps provide a rapid, low-code development environment for building custom apps. for your business needs so when i am saying you are going to develop a a custom app for your organization or for your team it doesn't mean that don't worry that uh, you need some developing knowledge or you need to uh, have knowledge how to create a app or the coding for the same no it's not like that because microsoft power platform is a low code or i will say no code platform if you do not have any knowledge about developing the apps or coding and all still you can explore this platform and you can start building application so people use apps for every area of their lives and business uh, should be uh, no ex- exception right like in our day to day life of course we are using different applications like for shopping for movies for uh, like for series and all right so of course when we are using for the social media platform and all then why should not be having uh, apps for our business need for our day to day business need right so here you have that where you can create the solution you can start building app for your organization without even writing a single code so power app it just is your experience that how you can uh, go with app development with a simple interface here you just have to drag and drop the components on the screen and within few minutes or with following few steps you would be able to have a good app in your hand considering power automate Microsoft Power Automate lets user create a uh, automated workflow between the application and services like for example as i said uh you are using outlook okay now for example you have received an email and whatever the attachments are there you want that it should be automatically saved to your one drive or it should be saved to your required location or to the sharepoint that will be automatically done with the help of power automate for example uh, triggering any action or sending the approval mails that all you can do by using microsoft power automate so here you just don't have to waste your important productive hours on just drafting the same email every way every time means uh, for example every weekend like every friday not weekend <laughs> every friday evening 5 o'clock you have to submit a report to your boss okay now what you generally do every uh, friday like evening 5 o'clock you have to wait and you have to draft a mail and send to your boss or if it is a monthly report you have to do the same but if i say you just have to draft a mail or you just have to uh make a automated flow just one time just schedule it as per your timing as per your day and automatically every time your mail will be sent with the updated file just imagine it has reduced your productive hours and you it is it is like it is like you you are not wasting your time doing some repetitive tasks again and again better you can utilize it somewhere else 
so not only for the individual user but power automate allow for the creation of enterprise grade process automation power automate a simple interface allow every level of user to automate work task from beginner or to the seasoned developer now when you are dealing with data you have the data in your organization you must be working with some reports like you need to create reports with your data like your uh, your sales report okay so uh, sales report of every month or it's for year wise whatever and you have to present that report or you are going to work on that report as a team so if i say you have this power bi where you can work with data analysis where you can visualize your data you can create your report you can create a dashboard and once it is ready just publish it on cloud and once it's on cloud your report is ready to be used in your teams and again you are of course sharing your report but again it's in a secure manner yes anyone someone has unmuted himself or i think any question guys please all of you mute yourself okay so here in power bi though you have already created a report but still if you have to uh, create a uh, ad hoc report like suddenly your boss has said i want these changes i only want the data for the day wise or for so and so date or for so and so day then immediately within few seconds you can create a report and not only on web you can access this report via your mobile too so power bi is a business analytics service that deliver insight for analyzing data it can share those insights through data visualization which make up reports and dashboards to enable fast informed decision you can consider power bi as uh, the analysis and uh, insight leg of the power uh, power platform and it takes business data and allow you to display it in a way that makes the most sense to user and power bi dashboard potentially replace a standing meeting to report out on company metrics such as your uh, sales data your progress against goals or employee performance now uh, see if uh, i think you might have observed many times that when you are using any app or any website have you ever experienced that you have opened and suddenly a chat bot has opened and someone is asking hi i am virtual agent or i am the so and so uh, how can i help you have you ever observed i have observed like i am using many shopping apps and uh, websites as i open suddenly there is a chat box opens and it is asking me that what is what like how they can help me and in place of searching out for some information i can just directly put my query on the chat box and i'll answer for the same or even if i am having any any uh, any complain and all then again i do not have to go anywhere else i don't have to worry as i will open the app i can put my uh, complain on the chat box and immediately i get the response for the same so this is what this is actually the chatbot right so for giving better user experience we can also create chatbox in our solution like whatever the app we are using we are whatever the app we are building we can integrate chatbot or i will say the powerful chatbot and we can create these chatbot by using virtual agent so microsoft power virtual agents enable anyone to create powerful chatbot using a guided or i will say no code interface without even if you do not have any knowledge how to 
develop any chatbot and all you will say of course we are we are we do not have the knowledge to create the virtual chatbot then how we can do so as i said this is a no code or low code platform though you are only a subject matter expert you do not know any knowledge about the coding or developing but still as a subject matter expert you can start building powerful boat for your organization or for your team right generally what happens like um in organization generally you have subject matter expert he know that what type of queries can be occurred from the end users what should be the answer for the same if if this is the answer what should be the next question but subject matter expert do not have knowledge to develop a chatbot so they are dependent on a developer now what happens you have a chatbot developer and you have a subject matter expert both are do two different person and every time when they are working on a solution they have to communicate with each other they are dependent on each other it takes much time to complete a solution or to work on a solution so in that case this power virtual agent will help you to create and develop interactive chatbots so power virtual agent basically addresses many of the major issues with chatbots building it just eliminate the uh, so here you are just removing the gap between a subject matter expert and a development team the microsoft data verse microsoft data verse this is as i as i said this is what it's a database in simple word we can say it's a database of microsoft power platform but i will not only use the word database because this is more powerful than the normal database it is not only storing your data but yes it is managing your data if this is the place where you can have your data and automatically it will be integrated with other services too like though you are working with power app your virtual agents your power bi and every time in the back end this uh, microsoft data words will help you to securely store and manage your data now when you have to connect from one service to another of course you are going to use some connectors too like as i said when you are receiving a mail and automatically the attachment should be saved in one drive so of course your one drive is a different service and your outlook is a different service and when you are using these functionality via your app so this app is a different service so when you are going to integrate these services so you are dependent on data connectors right so connectors are available for use in different products like you can use connectors when you are using power automate or you are using a uh, power app or you are uh, working with logic apps there are different like i will say more than 270 connectors that you can use on this platform but if you are not satisfied with these in built cons connectors you can create a custom connectors so you can start building a blank cause uh, blank custom connectors you can work with open api definition or from a postman collection the power app uh, like uh, this is a power app environment like how you are going to work with an environment like when you are working with any solution here you will get different type of environment now what is environment in your organization especially when you are using microsoft power automate every user gets a default environment and default environment is accessible by any user but when you are going to work with a solution it is not suggested to work on default environment okay environment is basically what environment is where you have all the capabilities of microsoft power platform but when you are going to test a solution or when you are going to 
uh, have a just for demo purpose you are working on any solution. So for that you can create a test environment. If you are going to work with a development project, you are going to develop a solution. In that case, you can use develop environment, developer environment, where you can develop your solution. Then you can have the production environment. Production environment is actually the real environment where your solution will be live. All the users are actually using your solution. So this is how you can create the environment as per your requirement. And once your uh, is uh, environment or when your solution is tested or once it is developed, you can convert it to the production environment or to the real environment. So when you're working on this platform, here you have some key roles and participatory role. So as a functional consultant is responsible for performing discovery, capturing requirement, engaging subject matter expert and stakeholder and translating the requirement and conferring the solution and application. So you apply as a functional consultant, you apply traditional business analysis technique while also having deep understanding of how to configure application by leveraging power platform. And you implement solution using out of the box capability, codeless extensibility, applications and new service integration. As a functional consultant, you implement the design that is provided by and in uh, collaboration with the solution architect and implements the standard branding and artifacts established by user experience architect. You also design the integration fields and points for collaboration with technical architect to provide seamless integration with third party application and services. So here we are done with our module one. Once we are done with module one, I would like first uh, uh, will take you to the look and feel of Microsoft Flower platform so that you will be having idea what we have discussed, whatever the overview I have given you. OK, so you can just relate yourself with the same. So for that, I will just open my browser. I'm already having my test environment ready, so I will show you how this test environment uh, looks like. So in my browser, I'm just typing. Power apps dot Microsoft dot com. OK, so when you have to explore your Microsoft Power Platform, so for that uh, you need to have at least Microsoft 365 E3 license. If anyone of you already having E3 trial account, you can immediately start uh, working on exploring your Power Platform. So I'm also sharing the link how you can create a dummy account with Microsoft 365 E3 license. OK, so I'm just sharing this link with you. So when you will open this link, you will notice here you have option to click on free trial.
the duration for the same is only one month Okay, so I have shared the link. So how you can start with this? Just click on this free trial. Okay, so now here you will notice already it is saying that already I am signing with my dummy account. So that's why it's saying that your account is already exist. But as you are going to start with a new trial account, you will be uh, you will be asked with some information like your first name, last name, your organization name, uh, number of people who are working in your organization. So you can just uh, keep on putting information, fill that information, and at the last you will be able to have your account. Uh, just a minute, I need to connect with my charger. Okay. So once your trial account is set up, then you can go to your Microsoft Power App. I'm just sharing this link too. Yes, so Himanshu, you have asked that how we use sandbox for practice. Uh, see, when you are going to use the free account or the trial account, you need to use the test account or the trial account, trial environment only. Okay, uh, you will not be allowed to use the sandbox. But yes, when you are in the real environment, like in your organization, sandbox is for uh, short term testing, like generally, uh, if you have any fixes to be applied on your uh, in your protection environment, or if you have to uh, try a few changes, if you are going to make that all you can do in your sandbox environment. Mancho, I hope uh, I could give you the answer. Himanshu, I hope your doubt is clear. Okay. Uh, I have a question on the custom connectors. You said uh, to connect to various services, uh, we can create custom connectors, etc. If mm -hmm. an existing connector is not there, something like that. So is there like, because there are so many connectors already coming out of the box. So is there some practical mm -hmm. example where we have to actually create it ourselves? Means how to uh, when to create custom connectors. Are you asking about that? Yes, yes. See, generally custom connector uh, connectors is what like you have some already available uh, services. OK, as I said, you have more than 270 connectors already available, but it's still like you have some uh, legacy apps in your organization. If you want to connect with the same in that case, you can go with the custom connectors. And uh, does that involve coding? Like, for example, we will need to connect with a legacy app using some JDBC or ODBC kind of a driver. 
and then we will have to code that custom connector uh, ourselves right or in some yeah, other these connectors or programming language yeah these connectors are actually functions based and they will call a specific function in the underlying service okay so uh, just to summarize the process of coding a custom connector is that in some programming language like a c sharp or something or is it a drag and drop itself in power apps no no here see when you are working on this platform you can use a blank custom connectors too okay you can start from that or you can start from an open api definition Correct. So I was not very clear on that blank connector or open. So what is exactly open API definition uh, at a high level? Ah, uh, is it okay if I will be sharing you the link for the same so that you will be getting sure. the in-depth sure. knowledge about the custom connectors? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So if you will be accessing this link. you will get this window here and now when you are ready with your trial account like for example in my case i am using this account as it is showing me this is my trial account okay now you have to click on start free you don't click on sign in you just need to start with start free when you are going with start free taking time okay so when you are going to start with the first time again you need to put the information like your account detail and all and once it is verify it will give you the confirmation detail So, like already, I have the license for Microsoft Power Automate. That's why it is giving me this message. So, and last, you can click on Get Started. Okay, but already when uh, you have started working with Power Apps, then you can directly click on Sign In. So, in my case, I am clicking on Sign In. But when you are going to start first time, you need to click on Start. Free. so along with e3 license and e5 lessons you can explore the capability of microsoft power platform free you do not have to additionally pay for the same Okay. So this is Power Platform Look and Feel. So when you will start with Microsoft Power Platform here, you will be landed here, where you can start building your app, or you can start working with DataWorks or SharePoint and all. So when I was saying DataWorks, like the database management service of inbuilt. uh this platform it doesn't mean that you only have to use data words okay you have like uh you are free to use any database when you are working on this platform like when you are working with power bi you can connect with any database services like if you are data is in cloud your data is in on premise services your sharepoint excel so you are free to use any data but yes why it is recommended to use dataverse as it's a inbuilt database services 
and the integration with the same is easy like when you are working with your app your uh, power bi automate or virtual agent so when you are using dataverse it will be easy for you to access your data store your data and to manage your data okay so now here you will notice you have the section for app so when you will click on apps you can have already created apps in your environment you can start building new app by clicking on this new app option this is for data verse okay so here you can start working with your database solution then here you can start building your flow when you will click on flows okay so here already some created flows are there in my environment you can start creating new flow by clicking on this option this is for chatbots like as i said microsoft power chatbot then you have ai builder so by clicking on this ai builder option you can explore the capabilities of ai builder then here you have uh okay then here last you have the solution i will discuss about it later but right now if you will notice at the top i am having environment as i said when you will be working on this power platform you need to have a environment okay so for what type of solution you are working like uh, what type of environment you are choosing as i said there is a default environment So when you have not created any environment, you are on your default environment, and default environment is accessible to any user in your organization who is having Power App license. Okay. Now, if you have to create an environment, so for that, you, there is another process like you have to go to admin center and then you can create an environment. Then again, I will be covering this part how to create an environment when I will be uh, starting with the lab part. so i mean just giving you the overview so as i said like you have different types of environment here the default environment then you have the trial environment the trial environment like in your case when you are exploring this platform you need to create a trial environment why trial environment why because this is only for the trial and testing purpose automatically this the length of the duration of this environment is one month after one month it will be automatically expired okay that's why for testing purpose this for trial purpose or for practicing purpose we recommend to go for trial environment okay now if you have to use the sandbox environment sandbox environment is what this is environment is a non protection environment okay non protection means which which where you can just copy and paste it and this environment is used for development and testing okay like uh, already your solution is running in the production environment and if you have to make any changes but before applying the changes in the real environment you use sandbox environment you just test that changes and all if it work fine then you can convert it to the production environment then you have uh, like a developer environment as i said it is created by users who have developer plan license okay so this is a special environment that is for by uh, basically used by the owners okay and here you can develop a environment or develop a sorry develop a solution for your organization then you have the production environment that is a real environment once a solution is created then you can convert it into the production environment so that's was about the environment now come to the solution 
Now, what is solution? Of course, you can individually use any of the platform. Like you can individually use Power App. Individually, you can or uh, use Power Automate. You can use Power BI. Individually, they are very strong platform, but these all are better together. Like when you are exploring the capabilities of all these platforms together, it makes a solution. Or in simple word, I will say solution is kind of a bucket where you can keep all the related objects together. Like when I'm going to start building a solution in place of going here and there, like creating a flow, creating an app, better I will go to solution. I will create a solution and I will start building all my objects and put all my objects in that solution only. Like right now, I think I have uh, a solution. Mm. So this is the environment, the a solution that I have created. That was for employee onboarding. OK, so now you will notice this is a, a demo solution that I have created in my environment that is the employee onboarding process. In this solution, uh, this covers employee onboarding process where I have a few tables like uh, employee table, designation table. OK, so you will notice I have all my objects together. Total, there are 20 objects in my solution. There are three tables. There are few dashboards. There are a few choices, chatbots. There is apps and processes and sitemap. And one cloud fold too. So these all are put together in that single solution. Got it? So this all solutions are for, or this, these all are related objects. That's why I have put in a solution. So in your organization, like of course as a, uh, as a consultant, like when you are working with a solution, it is suggested to have a solution for the same. It would be easy for you to import and export the solution to another environment. Going back. Similarly, right now I am having different environment, uh, different solution. And right now, when I will click on environment, you will notice I am having two environment. This is a default environment and I have created one more environment that is TL 900 test. Actually, I had taken a batch TL 900. So for the same, I just created an environment. That is TL 900. Same way you can create environment as per your requirement. So that was all about the PL, uh, that power platform environment. So after this, anyone, any query, any question? So I have a question. Yes. So uh, the chatbot option that we have left. Mm -hmm. For mm -hmm. that, do we do we means don't we need a power virtual agent license for that or it would work with the normal power app license? No, as I said, when yeah, you complete yourself first. So uh, because uh, within my organization, we don't have, I mean, we don't, we haven't procured license for power virtual agent. So mm -hmm. if any employee wants to build a chatbot, it would be a trial version for one month where, uh, where he cannot just post it. I mean, he, he cannot just, you know, publish the bot that he has created. Okay, so mm -hmm. we contacted Microsoft. They said there was a N number of, you know, there's a huge, uh, explanation that Microsoft had given of different licenses that we need to procure for our virtual agent. 
now uh, my question is here i see the chatbot option on within the power app thing so mm -hmm. i should will you have, will i be able to use it because i don't know i don't think we can use it right so right, right now <laughs> the environment you are observing here this is the developer environment this is the developer uh, license i have i hope you are getting okay. this is not yeah, the e3 it, i am having more features here in my environment because this is e5 and developer trial license i am having luckily okay. you know <laughs> if this is not available right now and but before uh, i think it is more than one and a half year i am using uh, this in this trial account and it is not expired why because this is a e5 developer this is okay. this is like uh, rich with features yeah i got it i mean e5 packages are uh, <laughs> addition we got it <clears throat> right so it may be when when you are using e3 license you do not have all the features available right now which is there in my environment but as i suggested you to have e3 because this is the only option available by microsoft right now for the trial purpose okay so when you are using e3 account the trial account here when you will go to power app again you need to have the trial for the same one month limitation when you will explore ai builder again ai builder you will get the option to have the one month trial license for every okay. features like ai builder virtual agent uh, power bi for everything you have the trial account uh, for one month only this is for testing but in your real organization environment what uh, license they are having though they are having e3 license but it doesn't mean they want to have or they want to uh, procure all the related uh, features related services i hope you so are getting like what we do is yeah i i got your point so what we do is like you know we i mean uh, uh, ideally as you have already said uh, we put everyone in a default uh, environment wherein they do what you know they can just connect with certain connector however uh, there are certain connectors for an example https you do, we don't provide that there is a premium connector for that we have a different for that we have created different environment so if someone mm -hmm. needs that we accordingly add them to those en environments and they can do whatever development they want to do so this is this is the uh, you know uh, uh, the approach that we take within our organization mm -hmm. but i am keen to know like uh, what best like i struggle from my environment so i am a global admin in my company so mm -hmm. what happens is i have i am facing some problems with the i have a environment built for our rep in development purpose which has most of the connectors added without paying any extra charge to microsoft however mm -hmm. i am facing a problem with a uh, dataverse connector that i want to use and microsoft restricts me or power app restricts me restricts me to do that because i i have to pull a data from a particular source which a which is a huge list of machines and their details and so dataverse is something i am not able to add to our environment so probably that i need to get a Okay, so you are saying that you are not able to use DataVerse connector. No, it 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 does not allow me within the environment that we created. It it does not allow. Ah, uh, okay. So may I know what environment, what type of environment you are using? What type of environment? As I said, like you have the production, you have the sandbox. Production. And all. So, uh, yeah, it's a production yeah. environment. Yeah. Sandbox okay. we don't use. I mean, and this is something completely new. I'll research on it later on. What you had said about okay. sandbox, now it's pretty interesting. I'll research. We don't use. We directly use production environment. We build there and we deploy. Okay. So <coughs> that's why we do that. That's how we do it. Okay, okay. But uh, this is actually I recommend you to have explore the sandbox one because directly that's doing right. the changes and all that's applying that. directly. But hmm. before that, just use sandbox no, that makes when sense. you feel that, that everything that, is fine, that, and then that hmm. completely makes sense. Actually, this was I mean, uh, this is I just heard. I mean, I did not know about this sandbox environment that we had it within Power App. I have I have noted it down. I'll raise it with the manager. So let's see. I mean, we'll try to move okay. towards that way. Okay. Nice. Thank you so much. Okay. 
Yes, Shripati, uh, uh, do you have any query or should I unmute you and unmute you? Uh, I just, or mute you, sorry. I just had one question about uh, the uh, multiple times. I mean, can you take advantage of the free trials multiple times? You said that the free trial is available only for a month. After that, it expires. So can you keep on uh, taking uh, free trials with a different email address or uh, there is a restriction on that? Uh, no, see when you are actually using E3 license, OK, so in E3, you can just keep on extending that. Generally, E3 is actually available for one month. OK, like in okay. my case, as I said, this is not E3, this is E5, E5 developer okay. trial. Like, That's okay. why I'm able to use it for long time. Okay. Before one year, Microsoft used to provide this trial license for the same, but now it's not available. Okay. You have okay. only E3 and that limitation for the same is one month. So whatever the services you are exploring here, though it is an AI builder or Power App, Power Virtual, whatever, it's only for one month only. But yes, uh, you can do one thing. Uh, once uh, this is over, like one year, uh, sorry, one month, you can create more account, another account. Right, yeah. So that's what I meant. So with a with a different email address, probably you can get registered Correct. for a free Correct. trial. OK, yes. So you can have your Gmail account or your Hotmail account. You can use that for have your trial account. OK, uh, one other question, uh, Komal. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you know what kind of uh, a license uh, has been provided by your organization? So while uh, you were um, sharing your screen, so I went and checked. Uh, I went into the power apps uh, that's provided by my organization so um, I see that it's actually a production environment that uh, that I have access to because we all are given a, a E3 license and we we use Office 365 but what kind of license uh, is being provided how do we know that mm -hmm. okay so for that you can just go to your account okay so now here you will get the option to view your account okay okay mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I I have. Uh, I'm seeing subscriptions page now. Yeah, I think I'm a little faster than you, Komal. Yeah, so I have. Uh, I, <laughs> okay, I have you got it. There. Yeah, I'm. I'm seeing that it's a Microsoft 365 e file license. That's that's. Okay, that's okay, that's good. Company. You have e file. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Komal. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So now we are done with our first module. That is Microsoft Power Platform Overview. So mm -hmm. I have just. Yes, uh, this is Abhijit here. So I just wanted to have a clarity on this open. Uh, yeah, on the same window. App source. And which. This is the window you're talking about. No, 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 yeah, this one, the power app. So on this, uh, if you see on this new solution, import solution and open app source. So can you just explain what is this open app source so, or uh, is it something that we can bring in some uh, 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 new solutions uh, via this to open app source? And what is the difference between this import solution and open app source? Yes, can you please repeat? You are you are yeah. asking about the import solution yeah. and import solution and open app source. Okay. See, when you are done with your solution, or if you have to import a solution to your current uh, in environment, like as I said, when you are working with any project right now, that is what actually the solution you are handling. 
like right now i have created solution pl100 new batch solution or employee onboarding solution so generally when we work on any project we are actually working on solution so undergoing to this solution we create a solution we work on that solution though whatever the environment you are using like it's i right now i'm using default you may be using a production environment you may be using trial environment or whatever you are using sandbox environment once your solution is ready it is published okay then you can import and export to another environment the main purpose of this option is what importing the solution to your current environment and exporting it to another environment got it yes and what is an open app source the open app source is generally what like uh, when you have the open source like uh, you have uh, you have imported it from somewhere else then you can have it like for open source solution like right now the solution you so are creating here only does that mean open app system. source and import solution are the same thing no import so, solution is so generally import solution is what like you have created the solution that power app only okay i will give you the detail about this importing solution and open source i will share you the link for the same so that you will be having the detail idea about the same okay and whatever the changes you are making in the solution every time you have to publish the solutions i hope i am making sense to you yes 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 yeah i understood that regarding publish all customization but the only confusion was between the import solution and open app source see for example like my my this solution is ready okay okay now here you will notice i am getting option for export the solution the way the time i am going to click on the export solution this solution will be saved in my desktop in this local machine okay now if i have to import it to another environment like for example i have created a solution in sandbox or if i have created a solution in developer environment okay i have to convert it into production environment or the real environment so what i will be do uh, doing i will be exporting the solution to my local machine because it may happen in your organization i am having access to uh, uh, to that developer environment but not the real environment because as a developer developers are only accessing the developer uh, uh, environment okay but they are not uh, they cannot import or export the solution to the production environment there is someone else or there is another administrator who is handling that environment okay so in that case you have developed a solution it's ready it's published you just export the solution hand over the solution to someone else who is handling the real environment and that person will import that solution in that environment by clicking on this option i hope it is clear yes so you are saying if i if i build a solution or an app in a different environment which is a sandbox okay so that can be uh, imported by someone else in his environment which is production that is created by someone else in his environment no no like i have i am a developer okay i have created a okay. uh, i have solution in my developer environment okay and i'm okay. i have done with the testing and everything and i want to release it to production so there are different mm -hmm. people who would be managing it so what i do mm -hmm. can they i mean i cannot give them access to my developer environment right they have to be right. in that production environment so right so how will they be able to import that within their uh, environment within the production yes, environment of course. or they need to, because okay. yeah that's what i am saying you are the in charge of you are you have created solution in your environment right so what mm -hmm. you will do once it is done you are going to export it okay once it is okay. exported okay. you can share that uh, exported copy to 
that person who is handling the real environment and okay, that okay. person will import it in his environment all right okay answers my questions okay, okay. thank you so you are exporting another person is importing hmm. got it thank you so I have a question over here, uh, Komal. Uh, so if for if at all uh, a solution is built in an uh, AWS environment, say uh, just for an example, I'm taking uh, mm -hmm. a solution is built in AWS environment. For example, say a website is created uh, mm -hmm. in uh, say AWS environment. So with this import solution, can we uh, you know uh, bring that to uh, this or uh, how how we can do that or we can we need to use open source open app source. You need to use open app source. Okay. Got it? Thank you. Yes. Generally, you know, app source, it includes software as a service application or a uh, solution built for Microsoft Azure or Dynamic 365 or your Microsoft 365, Power BI, Power Apps, or any consulting services from your Microsoft partners. So anything apart from that, uh, we need to use an open app source, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so should we move ahead to the next module or anyone else, any query, any doubt? Okay, so I'm just moving forward. With the next module. Okay, so before starting with module two, we will take a break for 15 minutes. Right now it's 11.34. I will start the timer for 15 minutes. Let's take a quick 15 minute break. Come back and we'll start with module two.
Guys, I have shared the MOC code with you all for PL200. Those who have submitted the MOC activation form. I repeat, I have shared the MOC code with you all for PL200 on your register mail ID. So do follow the steps and redeem the code before it get expired. Also, those who have yet to submit the MOC activation form. Do it right away so I can share the code with you all.
Okay, hello everyone. I'm back. I hope you all are there with me. Show me a thumbs up if you all are there with me. Okay, so let's start with our uh, next module. That is uh, how we are going to work with Dataverse. So in this module, we will discuss how we can start creating a data model. What is data model? How we can create and manage the processes with the same. And when you are using AI builder capabilities along with a solution, how you can work with AI builder. There are different data over setting that we can configure and we will get to know about the same. And then we will be discussing how to import and export that data here when you are working with Microsoft Power Platform. As I said, it's not only the data words, but if your data is, is somewhere else, like it's there in Excel or your SQL cloud or inbuilt data, you can have or you can export the capability of any type of data here on this platform. Now, how you can use tabular reporting options here when you are working on Microsoft Power Platform and how to configure the different security settings here. So here before starting with the same, I will just like you to uh, put focus on one thing that earlier it was known as common data service, but now it is known as Microsoft Dataverse. OK, so uh, when you will be appearing for a PR 200 exam or any exam, it may be that you will get the question uh, with common data service. So don't get confused. This is actually Microsoft Dataverse only. Uh, you may be asking that when it is renamed, why it is not there in it is updated in question. I am not saying that it will be there, but it may come. Like uh, I have observed when I was appearing for exam that there was some questions where it was named as common data service. So just uh, mark it somewhere. So here just uh, important terminology that is now change. As I said for Microsoft data words earlier, it was known as common data service. Before there was entity or entities, but now here it is named as table or tables. Like if you have any knowledge about the database or if you have worked with some database as well, you know, you must be very well aware about the entity terms. OK, so entity is nothing. It's a table. OK, like for example, when we are going to create a database of any of any school, for example, any college. The entity may be students, it may be the teaching staff, or it may be the library books and all. Or when you're working in organization, it can be employees, it can be designation. So here when you're working with data verse, it is known as table or tables. So we are we are not creating entity, we are actually creating tables. In term of field or fields attribute or attributes, it is known as column or columns. Record record is nothing here. It is known as rows. OK. Then we have option set or multi select option here. It is known as choices. So if you have any field or any column where you want to give choices to your end user. So here you have to create choices for the same. Or we are going to work with choice option. For example, uh, if employee is like full time and part time. OK, this is the choice like employee type. So you need to create choice as employee type and we will give we will set. We will add two choices that is full time and part time. Now there is two options and here the two option is known as yes or no. You can rename it. Yes, no. You if you want to uh, relabel it like any other option you want to put, you can. Now in our first lesson, we will get to know how we can start actually building a data model. So when this term data model comes in our mind, 
So data model is what basically when you are going to model your data means here we are going to define our data. So when we actually plan and create solution for our business or for our business requirements, we need to be able to describe like and model the object and the data we are going to deal with, right? Like for example, we are going to work with customer data or employee data. So here we need to define our data model, the relationship, how my one table is connected to another table. Got it? Like if you have uh, tables like you have sales, you have customers, you have product, uh, then you have order date and all. So we have to make a model like how these entities or these tables are connected with each other. And each, each table, what are the different columns are there? What are the type of that columns is there? Okay, then the metadata means like how you are going to define your table, the fields, the types of fields and the relationship. So there are several functional uh, definition that help you out to describe your data model and the process within your Microsoft Power Platform or especially within the your uh, data verse or your apps. Now entity or tables, we can say these are, are the formal representation that is used to model and manage your business data. Like if you have to manage your employee data, so you can create a table for the same. Okay, if you have to manage uh, sales data, so you can create a table for the same to keep the data, to hold the data and to manage the for the same. So for example, you can have for contacts or you can say people or for companies, your projects, your products, sales, any appointment table that all you can take as an example of table. In term of column, common simply will say it's a, it, it hold a similar kind of information. Like for example, if the column is employee joining date. So in that column that all information will be related type, like all will be joining date only. So the information which is stored in an entity or in a table, it is represented as a set of fields or we can say attributes. It is created during the designing process only to capture the specific type of information. For example, in employee table, you may have employee name, uh, his uh, personal email ID, his uh, corporate email ID, uh, then the address, contact number. So that information you can have as a columns, okay? And now when you are going to have columns and you need to define what type of information it is going to hold. Okay, what is the type of the information? Like for example, if I say the joining date, the type of that column, it should be date and type, or it would be date. If it is email ID, then the type of that column should be email. If it is, uh, for example, name, then the type should be the text. Similarly, Whatever the type of column you are having, whatever the type of value it is going to hold, you need to define the same type of that column. Now metadata, metadata, we can say the definition of the entity or the attributes or relationship between the entity in your data verse. It is commonly we can say it's a metadata. Okay, metadata in simple words, it's a data about data. It's a, it's a description of your table and the relationship. So metadata contain all the information which is necessary for your power platform to use your entities and data. It also make it possible to describe and transport changes between different environments. You have different other options for your table, like uh, your ownership, like before you are going to actually create or edit the table or the entities in Power Apps. 
you should understand that there are different type of entities and once a custom entity is created custom entity i mean to say when you will be start working with your environment you will observe there are some default entities or default tables okay that is provided by microsoft itself like contact table account table there are different tables some different default table that you can start using in your solution but you can create custom entity to or custom table to as per the requirement got it so once a custom entity is created a custom table is created these type cannot be changed okay so two major divisions are based on entity ownership and whether entity are activity entity activity entity in the sense uh, this is related with any meetings any appointments that will be activity entity there are four different types of entity ownership when you create a custom table only options are user or team owned or organization but you should be aware that other entities or other tables have different ownership types if i say user or team ownership it will add a field that is name owner so record for the entity can be assigned between user and team that have at least user level read privilege to the table now internally the owning user or owning team are stored separately and the business unit they belong to is also stored so there there are basically four look of field added that relate to ownership so this use of ownership means that you can set any of the user five access level in security role to control the record that the user can access uh, depending on where the user and the record are in business unit hierarchy now organization ownership means the entity does not have an owner field or the other related look up field and cannot be assigned to a user or team security role control whether user have access to all the record or no record so there is no separation by business unit so entities that do not have many fields are generally used as look up for categorizing other record so when a custom entity entity is first time created it is available only to user who have either a security role of administrator or security customizer so other security role must be modified to let other user view and use the new entity okay now you have other type of entity ownership that is your business owned like there are several business owned system entity this includes your business units your calendar teams security roles and user if it is none means there are many system entities that do not have any owner but most of them these are not visible so you can create custom entities that work together with the existing activities this means the activity and or your table will appear in the ui interface and other location there are two custom activity setting that is defined as an active entity no relationship like how your one table is connected to another table so you may show uh, you like many time you need to create relationship between your uh, data words table to allow the ability to associate different record type together like for example in our solution we have uh, let us employee onboarding table uh, solution we have one table that is employee and another table that is designation now we have to create a relationship between these two two, two table like whenever a user is going to enter a data for the new employee there is a column designation now the values for that designation 
column it will be taken from that designation table so here we have created a relationship between designation table and this employee table so you have also like uh, you can say there are like different other scenario like for example you have kind of sales data and then you have customer table you have a product table or you have purchase table so in that case you can create a relation between customer and sales then product and sales so at the end you will be having idea that which say like customer uh, who have purchased so and so product on so and so date or so and so month so this is how at the end you will be able to fetch the data so you have different type of relationship like you have one to end relationship okay and you have end to end relationship so when a we are talking about the case like uh, employee table and designation table here you have the relationship one to end relationship now end to end relationship that is many to many relationship like for example uh, if there is a table like uh, there is a instructor table and there is a uh, attendees table okay now this is what the many to many relationship because you attendees might be attending this session or you attendees might be attending other sessions too so this type of relationship is what many to many relationship now there is a hierarchical relationship like how your relationship carries to another table like in example you can see there is a infrastructure upgrade then you have network equipments server upgrades then these relationship are carry forwards and it makes a hierarchical structures now when we are talking about the fields in a particular table there are different types of fields you can have like uh, for a single line text like your name your uh, uh, your last name your father name you can have single line similarly if you have address or if you have any description or the note for the same then you can have multiple line of text similarly for choices like as i said full time or part time then you can have choices column in that case you need to create the choices first and then it will be taken care here in this table for example you may have business units so again for business unit you can create choices then you have yes no whole number decimal number look up image date and time that all fields type you can use in your database table you have different other fields detail like you can field display format or field properties field securities the description for the same that you can explore now calculated and roll ups columns like uh, like for example if you want to have any roll ups column or any calculated columns or field for example uh if there is any employee his interview date is uh for example is 30th of august now generally what happens if employee the last interview date is uh so and so date automatically after one month it will be his joining date got it so for that in place of putting date manually or the joining date manually it should be calculated okay like for example if it is i if i have put the interview date 30th august automatically it should calculate 30 days and under the joining date the date should be displayed so for this type of purpose you can have calculated and roll up fields okay now here you can see the like for example for calculated you can have the full name is equal to first name plus last name so if you have displayed the first name and you have taken the last name automatically for full name the name will be displayed as a first name plus last name 
Roll up phase, like as I've given you example about the joining date and the last interview date, you can use roll up columns. Now for enable your entities or your table auditing can capture when a record is created or whether it is deleted or shared as well as any changes to the relationship or association and audited fields. So user access and changes to the security rules are also locked. So as an administrator, you can keep an eye on your the records if it is being changes or created or deleted. So to view your audit data, you must process a uh, process of view audit history and view audit history security privileges. Auditing must be enabled at organization level before uh, auditing can occur even if auditing has been enabled at the entity or field level by default auditing is disabled at the organization and the entity level so this will have to be enabled to perform any auditing within your organization so after the first lesson anyone any doubt any query any question No one. Okay, in our next lesson, we are going to create and manage processes. Now, business rule. You know, generally in our organization, when we have uh, working with our data, we may have few business rules. So, as per those rules, uh, any end user should not be able to enter the data in his own way. Means data should be reflected as per the rule defined okay i will take an example like for example um in my organization if the employee is full time his total number of leave should be 30 okay and if it is part time the number of leave should be 15 this is a rule okay so as per rule when a user is entering the data this rule should be applied means for this particular field like number of leave data should not be entered manually it should be entered automatically so for this purpose we can create a business rule okay like what we can do we can create business rule where we can define if a user is full time then if condition is true then number of leave should be automatically taken as a 30 days if the condition is false means if it's not full time then automatically the number of leave should be 50. so this is how we can automate the business requirement we can automatically apply the business rule to our data What all get captured when auditing is enabled means? Auditing actually it can capture when a record is created. OK, so whenever you are making any changes in the record, because it may happen you know, that someone has edited the record or a new record is created. So auditing is capturing all these changes, even though there is changes in relationship association. I hope I could give you answer. OK, and even if uh, your access on any data or any security role is changed again, that is locked. So you can get it while auditing. OK, so now here when you are in your solution, so while creating business rule, you will get a window kind of this. OK, so here the first is what right, the condition. So when there is a condition, you need to define the condition. Like here in our case, we are defining the condition if employee is full time. So you need to define the entity or the table. OK, 
in that table what field you are going to take as a condition and a value accordingly you can set a value you can remove a value you can uh, display a error message display a warning message whatever so accordingly we can set the rule just publish it or just activate it and then it will be automatically applied to your field now workflows we can say workflows are a type of process in your data wars which is designed to automate your business process the business process flow means what like uh in your organization you must be dealing with some business processes now if you want to convert these business processes into digital processes or we can say in a automated processes then you can explore the business process automation capability of your microsoft power platform generally business process flows it works with your model driven app when we will discussing more about apps or the types of app we will be discussing about uh, how business process automation works but here this is actually for jumping from one process to another automatically like for example we have taken the example of solution employee onboarding in that onboarding process there are different processes may be involved like for example few processes which is performed by hr um for example his basic information which is put by hr then a uh, few information that technical information like for example is a device is set up or not or the vpn is set up for for uh, set up or not or corporate email id is created or not so for this technical requirement there is a technical admin who is going to take care of that process there may be another process that will be handled by manager like which business unit is allotted to him okay or uh, or any other details about the business unit he is going to handle any other instruction that will be handled by manager ah uh, then then there may be another process that will be handled by that new like he has to complete his induction he has to complete his biometric so these all are the different business processes got it now it should be done automatically means once the hr is completed with his process automatically it admin should be uh, able to enter his detail in his process so this is what we can do by the business process okay now here it's up to you to whether you want to make any changes you can do of course okay uh, like uh, if you want to edit any particular process like hr process or your uh, manager process and all that you can do so that flexibility you have you can use this business process automation you can stop it or you can just keep it on pause like if it is not required any more you can uh stop it for a moment now workflow automation uh this we can use this for to initiate the automation that does not actually require any user interaction like for example automatically uh, uh automatically creating any uh, like responding to any record for example uh if if hr has completed his process automatically a email should be sent to it it admin that now his uh, it is his time to complete the process and he should get the link for the same or automatically by clicking on the link he should be able to enter to that process similarly when his process is done his part is done then for the another stage manager should be getting notification and so on so this is how you can configure your workflows now in your power platform you can explore the capabilities of ai builder 
Now, if AI builder, you are having this question in your mind that are we going to use machine learning capabilities here? So I will say yes. Here you can explore the machine learning capabilities here. But here you have two options. There are some pre-built model which is already created and ready to use. You can explore that or if you want to create a new model, you want to have you want to learn uh, you want to uh, go with a new model like create from a scratch as per your business need that again you can do. OK, so this is how we can have the AI builder capabilities. It actually helps you to improve your business performance. By uh, automating processes and predicting the outcomes. By using AI builder, you can quickly just bring AI to your apps or to your flow that connects your business data that is stored in your underlying data platform or that is your uh, that is your data verse. Or in various cloud data sources, like for example, you are using OneDrive, you are using SharePoint, so you can use the capability of AI Builder anywhere. Okay. Like, uh, for example, uh, I am working with invoice processing, okay, or the form processing. So there is an inbuilt model, okay. So what will happen? Um, for example, whenever a new invoice I am putting in my OneDrive folder, automatically the data should be fetched from that invoice and it should be saved in my SharePoint list or in an Excel file. Just imagine. Like we have to generally what we used to do, we used to manually pick up the things from that invoice and we are putting it manually in our sheets. But by using AI Builder, your model is ready or just one time just learn your model. OK, then your model will automatically take the data from your invoices or from the form and it will be saved in your Excel sheet. So this is how you can explore the AI Builder capability. Or I would like to take one more example, like for example. You are working with the Power Apps, OK? And you are frequently some having some visitors in your organization and uh, you need to keep the record of the visitors like uh, like their name, uh, last name, email ID, address, location, whatever. Now they must be having some uh, business card. OK, so they have business card. Just imagine just by scanning their business card automatically your app is fetching the data from the business card and it is saved in your data verse. The same as it. it is you are actually saving more than uh, generally what happens like it takes 10 to 15 minutes to put one record in the system, right? And now it is taking hardly one second. And your data is automatically saved from business card to your uh, data bus. OK, so this is how you can explore the capability of AI Builder. So AI model generally that you create in AI Builder, it, it, it can help you to provide intelligence to enhance your businesses. It just simplify your AI creation experience by giving people with any level of technical skill the ability to add AI capabilities to their app or their flow without even writing a code. Yes, so whatever the example I have just taken, you do not have to write any single line of code. OK, and it your model will be created. So AI Builder also provide pre-built AI model. As I said, uh, you can create your model or you can use pre-built model. Like in my examples, I have taken invoice processing model and business card reader model. So where you do not need to gather data to build and train the model, you can immediately start working right away. There is a question. Uh, of course, I will if I will get time, I will show you uh, that how you can working uh, with AI builder by using app. OK. So when we will be covering lab, I will try to cover up this part too. 
or if i could not get time to create from scratch i will show you the app that is uh, that is already created in my system okay so when you will uh, go and uh, click on that ai builder you will get two option build and model so when we click on build you can start building a model like here you have form processing object detection from processing is what to process your forms like already you have forms and your data will be fetched from the form it will be saved to your uh, excel sheet or your sharepoint list and all object detection it help you to detect the object like for example if you have the image of some objects it would be able to count the objects or recognize the object there is a prediction model and this is the text classification model and here you have business card reader then you have that i was just discussing that is business card reader you have language detection you have the text recognitions it all you can explore so once your model is ready you need to publish it see whenever we are working with our solution though we are creating a app we are uh, exploring the ai builder capability we are creating a model we are creating a business rule every time you need to publish it okay the so same way when you have created a model from scratch you need to publish it okay but in case you are using pre built model like the default model which is already there you do not need to publish it is ready to use so you can consume a model like as i said already there are some defined model you can consume a model there are two way to consume it first you can use it via your power app or you can use power automate okay so i have covered two example that is a uh, business card reader so business card reader that you can use via power app like you have created a app in that app you can have a business card reader and whenever you will scan a business card or you will upload a business card automatically that information will be taken on that app once you will click on save it will be automatically saved to your dataverse table and one more example that i have taken that was form processing that was the example i have taken for business uh, sorry for power automate where automatically whenever you are uploading any invoice or any form to your one drive folder automatically the data will be fetched and will be saved to your excel or from your on your sharepoint got it so these all are the two platform where you can use your model okay so in our next lesson we are going to discuss about how you can configure the data verse setting so when you are going to configure or uh, it our setting you need to go to admin center where you have plate for plate form setting okay if you want you can change the theme like here you will notice here you have different themes that you can apply to your power plate form okay you can set the notification to as a admin you will get the notification you can set the password again and under the setting only and contact the friends you can configure the duplicate detection setting too okay like if any duplicate records are enter you will be notified or it will be automatically clean now importing and exporting the data like when you are working with your power uh, microsoft data verse so here of course you can use your default ent entities which is already there like here in this diagram you can see there are account address appointment attachment contacts these are some default entities or you can create a new entity it is too but if you have data somewhere else 
it may be in your uh, on premise database or it is there in excel or it is there in in your cloud so for that purpose you need to use the option get data and by using this get data you can import your data from any other location so you can use the data flows to it will allow you to transform and load your data into your dataverse environment or your azure data lake storage you can define data connection and destinations too there is a data integrator and third party tool that again can be used you can uh, export your data to like for example you have created a table from scratch in your dataverse and the same table you want to export to your excel or to any other uh, data source that you can export easily okay you can even export to your data lake or even you can use power automate option to export your data like for example you have created a flow which is fetching the data from your dataverse table and saving it into excel sheet so that uh, you have different option to explore you can use tabular reporting option if you want to explore like here you can use this report wizard like uh, these are the reports that will uh, give you the idea like where you can configure the custom or out of the box reported reports you can access reports from model driven apps as i said when we will be discussing apps we have different types of app that we can create like you have model driven app then you have a uh, custom app so why this model driven app is here because model driven apps are data first approach okay it takes a data first approach so if you have to access any report from your model driven app that you can do you can use word templates like you can generate reports from uh, like from your dataverse row you can have different documents that you can explore like here you can see it allow you for that easy sharing of your data and it is only intended for consuming data not for editing the data you can use excel templates too that can be open in excel online or even you want to download it you can download and on your local pc or local machine you can open it and consume there are different security settings that you can apply on your dataverse so to configure and install your you can start by creating a business unit so once your business unit is ready you can have or you can uh, use some pre built security role or if you want to create a new custom role that you can do and that defines the your organization structure so once your dataverse is deployed the setup create a root business unit that represent the primary organization means here you have a default business unit so all the user in your organization are the part of root business unit then later on you can keep on creating business unit like Uh, business unit one, two, and so on, and keep on uh, adding users to your business unit. So additional security rules can be configured to specify the privileges that will be granted to user who uh, do different jobs in different area of the organization or the departments. We can say so after the organization structure and security model is configured. users are created and security roles are assigned to provide the privileges that they require if you have not provided any role or any privileges user will not be able to use that business unit so user can also be grouped into team and it can be used to share records or personal views or charts and dashboards and are also used to define the, the security model here are some examples of your business unit structure like uh, you have data 
sensitivity means your hr and finance they have access to sensitive information such as a personal files or company banking information then information protection like your r and d uh, information could be very time sensitive and while not secret within the company so access should be restricted to minimize potential leakage of the competitors operational or uh, geopolitical autonomy that like engineering operates as an independent entity or independent able and customer service is located in a different country or region uh when we talk about regional requirement means performance metrics are calculated as per region to maximize operational effectiveness <coughs> so business units from a hierarchy that contains group of users or teams and the records the user and teams own this is what business unit so the hierarchy provides security boundaries to control the scope of the user's permission this means that uh, permission can be granted to records so that user can perform different action on records that are owned by that other users or team in their business unit so from the action that they can perform on record that are located in another business unit so business unit will say that are also helpful when you consider your reporting requirements so depending on the access level that are granted to users to read records uh sometime a single re report can be used by several user in the in that different business unit so if user have access to record for the whole organization you can use business unit in the queries of your report to filter out and categorize result so we recommend you that you create only business unit that you must have to meet the security or reporting requirement these all are the security roles overview okay where you have the different tables here you have the core records or if you have any custom entities or custom tables so you can click on that custom entities and all the custom tables will be listed here and on that particular table you can set the role for the same or the access level for the same like here you can have write read write delete append that all role you can define whether there should be no access like you can go for none you can have the user level access business unit you can have like uh, for for the organization level depends here you have some privileges and access level that like uh, create read write delete append like in our previous slide here you will notice we have some create read write and all so that all are the access level that you can define here you have some role examples like system administrator system administrator he is having full permission and the most access to data and configuration as a system customizer you have full access to all custom table and role level privileges of some variety as a environment maker you can create new resources that is associated within an environment now uh, for example uh, in your organization you have a default environment okay and you want set of few users and uh, you want them to explore power as power platform capabilities in the real environment real environment in the sense uh, in the power platform like they are not having any trial license or they are not having any dummy account in your organization account only they want to explore power platform so it is recommended that you need to create an environment that will be the test environment okay the trial environment 
and here you can add users as a system customizer okay so that group will be having the role of system customizer so that time they will be having full access of all the custom tables so they can explore the capability of power platform in their trial environment so whatever the table they will be creating even though they are using the custom table and at the end like after one month that will be automatically deleted so this is how you can this use the role as per your requirement now a team is simple word you can say it's a group of users okay and they all are having a same goal or we can say for achieving the same goal they work together so you can say it can be a department it can be for a project or for a common goal or for a uh, temporary basis like they are working on a project so whether to use team in your uh, in your uh, dataverse it's just optional if you want you can use a team there is no requirement that an organization must create their own team or do anything with the default team so when you are working with team there are two type of team the first one that is owner team and then access team owner team can be have security rules and therefore one record own record and access team cannot have security rules and cannot own any record those records can be shared with the access team so here you can have the team example here this is the owner team and this is for the support manufacturing and then again under support you have jane and robert who are the part of the support team and under manufacturing there are again two users who are a part of manufacturing team now as a user a and user b they are having the team membership okay and accordingly they are able to have that report you can create and manage columns security profiles like you can configure the column level security when any table uh, is having certain columns that are uh, more sensitive means you need more uh, uh, more restriction while accessing on that data it is available for most of the out of the box tables and the custom tables that you are creating in your organization and to implement you can enable the field security or one or more columns for an entity you can configure hierarchy securities to like you can have the manager hierarchy then as per the position hierarchy and access right now we are done with our module 3 after module 3 uh, we have again some labs that in that lab we will be uh, discussing that how we can start with our microsoft dataverse environment how we can create the environment how we can uh, create a solution and how we can explore the the custom entities and the default entities it again that part we will be covering when we will be starting with our lab part so now after the end of this particular module anyone any doubt any questions you have Yes anyone any doubt Okay now you can unmute yourself
Rahul, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, I can. So, so I have a question like uh, you were talking about this auditing part, which is uh, very uh, interesting. So uh, how can we turn it on within? How do we check whether it is turned on in our organization level or not? And uh, the second part of the question is that for existing environment, which is already created, can and how to do it? Means you are talking about the auditing part? Yes. Okay, so how do we, I will be how, uh -huh. okay. I will be how I we, will be sharing the details sure, for sure. the same. No problem, Rahul. Anything else you want to ask? No. No problem. That is all. Thank you. Okay. So I hope you have understood the benefit of auditing part in all if it is enabled in your organization. Yes. This yes, part yes, is yes, clear. Yes. Yep. Okay, yes, okay. Correct. Hmm. Uh, I think there was someone else I have given you right to unmute you. I think Sunil, you can also unmute yourself. Hello. Yes. I'm audible. Yes, yes, you are audible. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, madam. I just want to know what is the technical knowledge required to understand this problem with forms. Sir, your voice is not clear. Can you please repeat? What is the technical knowledge required to understand the power apps? Okay, technical knowledge. See, <laughs> technical knowledge, as I said, if you really want to uh, explore the capability of power app, if you remember at the starting, I have uh, given you the overview about the certification about power platform. It depends upon your requirement or the your interest area. Like whether you want to go for app maker, you have the app maker role in your organization, or you have the consultant role. You are more working on a data part like data analysis and all. You are going to visualize the data. So for each and every role, you have different certification. And you will be exploring that capability. OK, but whatever the role you are choosing suitable for you, it is recommended first to have the fundamental idea. OK, so first fundamental you have to explore uh, PL 900. OK, this makes your journey easy. It's not that again I'm saying it. To go for PL 900, even though don't clear that exam, like I will say, don't appear for that exam, but at least uh, explore that uh, what is the modules are there, what is the course is there, what is the content is there. Just have the overview of the same. Once you have the fundamental knowledge, you will be having good idea that yes, this platform is what is all about, what are the different functionalities are there, what are the different capabilities are there. It will help you to choose your rule and according to that role, choose the exam and appear for the exam. This will give you really a good understanding about this platform. So first, can you tell me what is your interest area or what is your role requirement in your organization? Currently, I am uh, doing uh, as a project manager, looking at the ESP documents. Again, your voice was dropped. Some background noise is coming. Can you please repeat? Uh, currently, I'm uh, looking up for the technical things in my organization, but uh, some of the projects we are getting from the outsource from the NC companies for the power platforms. So that was the reason they wanted to know. So technical things we have on ESP.NET uh, projects and now the more projects are coming on power platforms. OK, OK, so then you have uh, if you really are uh, interested for the developing part. So for that, hmm. you can go for that uh, PL 400. Right, okay. that is especially for the developing part. OK. Well. And this PL 200, this is what 
again related with the power app maker like you will get to know how to create the app and all but not in depth okay not in depth this okay. is more about the consulting purpose okay like got it are kind of a middleman between the organization and the stakeholder and the end users and you are explaining the solution okay. or the need in that way you are understanding okay. this straight okay. okay. thank you so much for Okay. Anyone else? Any yeah, query? You. Any question? Yeah. Welcome. Just a minute. Okay, so someone has asked about the auditing part. So I will just show you how you can do that. Okay, so when you are on this platform, first you need to go to the setting. Okay, in that setting, you have admin center. Actually, I wanted to cover this part in that lab, but as you have put up this question, I will be showing you. For that, you should be having access of Power Platform Admin as you should be having Power Platform Admin Center role. And uh, yes, so here this is the Power Platform Admin Center. In this Admin Center, you have Environment option. Just click on Environment. Now, for example, I have selected this environment that is PL 900. And here I have setting. Under this setting, I have audit and logs. And here you have audit setting. And here you have option to start auditing. Just click on that and your auditing will be started. I hope you have got your answer. Uh, so who have asked the question? Yeah, it was myself. Thank uh -huh. you. OK, OK. So I have you have noted down the steps. <laughs> so whatever the environment you want to be enabled for I, auditing, just so you have to go to that environment setting and you will get this option. OK, and how do we I mean, just in case we want to check if it is turned on in the organization level. Or if yeah, we so this have is a what the organization level, right? within pl power platform admin center right yes yes you are on the power platform admin center okay so, yeah. environment level like this is for organization only okay okay got it so it, you go to settings right do right to that particular environment yeah okay. Okay, let me just try it real quick and here you have start auditing. Then here you want to access the log or read logs or not. For that, you need to just keep on clicking on that option. Settings. OK, got it. Thank you. Welcome.
Okay, so I will go to another thing. I have few related links. Uh, if you will notice, I have shared few links uh, via chat. You can explore that. I have shared you the environment overview and how you can create the environment. I will be covering this part uh, when we will be creating labs. And I have shared the link for, I think, custom connector too. Someone was asking about the same. This uh, link I'm sharing, this is for how you can create and manage the field within an entity. Uh, so Neil, can you please, please put your hands down if you do not have any question more? Thank you. OK, and uh, there is one more important link I'm sharing. This is about the security role. How you can start with a security role and how you can create a custom security role. Again, I will try to cover this part too. Okay, so now I'm going to start with our next module, module three. OK, so in this module, we will be discussing more about our app. OK, so here in this module, we will explore the app making capabilities on this platform. We will get to know what are the different options we get to create the apps and what are the types of app we can create here. So we have already taken the overview of this platform. We have got to know about the Microsoft Dataverse, and now we are moving forward towards making apps. So here when you are going to create an app, you will get three options. First, how to make app that is model driven app, how to make canvas app and how to make portal apps. Now, when we are talking about the model driven app, see basically when you're going to create the app, you may have two main approach. The first one that is your uh, look and feel or I will say you UI look and feel or second approach may be the data approach means you are focusing more on data handling part how you are going to process a data so having those scenario in your mind you need to choose the type of app you are going to create for your solution now when we are talking about the model driven app so model driven app where you are going to build an app screen by screen by adding logic, you are going to add as you go. Again, I'm saying code, it doesn't mean that the compulsory you have to create the code. As I said, this whole platform is a low code and no code environment. So you can create a low code or no code model driven app. Okay, just by following few simple steps. So model driven app, it uses a component focus approach to develop an app. So when you are developing Canvas app, you have complete control over the appearance and behavior of your apps. But when you are using model driven app, 
the layout is mainly based on comp components that you add to the app. Okay, like for example, in our table, we have different fields. Okay, but how you are going to handle these fields or this data via uh, via end user? So that is all about model driven app. So here you do not have much control over the look and feel and the appearance part because you are focusing more more on data processing. So with model driven app, there are a number of different components and uh, component properties are available for any an app. So while creating the model driven app, you have to create a view of your app. You have to create the form of your app means in what way you are going to accessing the data from user in what way you are visualizing your data to your end user. It is a rich component focus and it is no code design environment. And this platform is having ability to create complex responsive app with a similar UI across a variety of devices from device from uh, you can use desktop or you can go for mobile. Apps can be distributed as a solution and rich component base and there is no code. Uh, I will say no code is used to design the environment. And modern driven apps is having ability to create your complex responsive app with a similar uh, variety of devices. Now, when you are going to create a canvas app, you will get different building blocks means first you have to define the data. OK, means of course the solution you are going to. It is based on data as it's a data first approach, so you need to define the data on. On the basis of that data, your app will be created. Second user interface. User interface means you have to define how user will interact with this app. Then the logics logics in the sense like if there is any digital process automation, if you have to go for any business rules, any cloud flows that you want to apply here. And the fourth one is visualization means if you are going to have uh, the um, like how end user is going to visualize your data uh, in a form of like tabular view or whatever, or if you want to have the reporting of your app. <coughs> Sorry, it means if you have any dashboard or the reports, though it is created via Power BI that you can easily integrate with your Power model driven app. These all are the components of your apps. Like first one that is site navigation. See whenever we are working on any site or any app, you will notice there is always a navigation for the end user navigation in the sense how users should move on from one place to another or from one view to another. So as a creator or as a developer of our model driven app, we can customize our site navigation like where we want to put the report, where we want to put the entity, or if any additional entity you want to put that all we can do via site navigation. Dashboard is what this is actually the dashboard where you are creating the report. It is published and it is integrated with your app. Business process flow is what as I explained you that when you are working with model driven app, you are working with different processes. OK. So. Our automation of these processes like jumping from one process to another automatically you need to create business process flow. Then you have forms <clears throat> forms means. You have to design the form to take the data from the user. Right, because when you have you have created the data in your data verse, it is not that directly you are able to use it in your app. No. So while you are using app, you need to create the form in your own way that you want to use in your app. And same with view. It may be 
while accessing the data you may have 10 fields but you do not want to display all these fields you want to have only four field to be displayed by to be displayed to the users accordingly you have to design your view and chart chart is what like if you have to display any chart that you can integrate with your app any question okay now when you are going to create a new app okay like you are going to create from scratch to app designer so this app designer is actually a platform where you are going to create your app so in that app designer you are able to connect with your tables here you will be able to integrate with your dashboards with your forms with your view with your views charts on your business process by default you are jump to your model modern app designer but you have option to go to classic app designer too okay in that classic view the look and feel is something different for the designer point of view you will get different option you can like customize your site navigation and all okay but whatever you have to do like while designing the app you have to go to app designer now when you are there on app designer here you have the simple drag and drop options to map your site or to put a component on the site like for example you have different fields and different columns and you have to simply drag and drop those columns or fields to design your forms or to view on your model this is what site mapping okay like here when your app is in running stage okay, this is the site map like here where you want to display the dashboards you can have another area for uh, the innovation where you are going to display the challenges ideas and here you have the change areas like innovation settings and all and accordingly i have designed the site mapping now when you are working with app designer as i said you have the modern view and the classic view so this is the classic view okay when you are in the classic view you can add the entities as per your requirement or the tables here you have option to add the dashboards this is for the business process flow and here you can design the site map now when you are working with site map designer like the the time you are going to click here in my previous slide this is the site map when you are going to edit it you will jump to this area now here you can start designing your site map here you can just add the group add the area and the sub area like i have to like in your websites you might have observed home then you have customer services then you have another section departments then you have another section staff okay so similarly i have another different different sections so these are the different groups and same way you can have different sub areas okay where you can keep on adding more entities more dashboards and all so once your site mapping is done your app designer is done then you can publish it as i said every time you are going to make something new customize anything new you have to publish it now here as i said you have integrate charts and dashboards so here you can have different type of charts and dashboards if you have to uh, get the dashboard from the power bi that again you can do and you can integrate in your model driven app this is model driven app chart overview where you have different type of charts that you can directly integrate like you can have column bar diagram then you have area line pie and all that all options you have to integrate here this is the dashboards like for example you have already created a dashboard dashboard is what dashboard is simple world it's a collection of different charts different reports and that dashboard or the collection of charts you can have integrated with a modern driven app you can easily compose your model driven app so when you are creating a model driven app by default you will get this type of form okay where you will be having only name and owner 
this is the time you have to start customizing your form in your own way or in your own requirement. Here you can define the sorry. Here you can define the header. If you want to change the heading, you can change. If you want to change the design of the app, you can do any footer you want to put. You can. So here you have different type of forms that you can use. Here you have main form, quick form, quick view and cart. But we will be using mainly main. OK, we are going to use main form. In that main form only we are going to customize and we are taking the entries from the end user. There are few form elements like standard columns Then you have custom controls. You have a specialized control. If you want, you can show and hide form elements as per your requirement or you can have the form event handlers too. like as per the event. This type of field should be displayed or not. You can use different components too while creating the app. You can use custom controls. You can use timeline control, any additional controls, any timer control that all you can do. Now as. We covered the model driven app where we were more dealing with the data first approach. Now, if you want to have a better look and feel or you want to focus more on the UI interface, then you have a best choice for Canvas app. So as its name, the Canvas, like in your real life, you must be knowing the word Canvas that is used to uh, put the imagination of which is there in your mind in a way of painting. OK, and we design the Canvas. Similarly, as an app designer, if you want to uh, design the app in your own way or the components to be put on your screen of your app in your own way, a better colors, look and feel, interface, then you can go for Canvas app. So when you will be working with Canvas app, the look and feel will be something like this, where you have screens, right? Here you have screens you can keep on adding screens and you can navigate these screens from one to another right means of course uh, it must be like you have a combination of screens and click turn or any option you are jumping to another screen so for that we are actually doing the navigation like model driven app we were creating site map but here we are navigating from one screen to another. For example, I have created a login app. In that login app, I have clicked on a button. If the user information, login ID and password is correct, he would be able to jump to another screen. That is a successful screen or you have got the message uh, login done successfully. So right now I'm having two screen. One is a login and one is a successful screen. So by clicking on that login button, I'm jumped to another screen. So this is how all screens are navigated to each other. Now here you have three ways to build your app. The first way is the template like this platform. You will get different templates to start working. OK, you can explore these template as per your requirement. You can customize it. You can customize the look and feel and start exploring that app. Second option, if you want to start from a data first, like for example, you have a table. I have a table contact directly. I will start building my app from that table itself. OK, third option, you want to start from scratch. I do not want to start from data later on. If I if it, it will be needed, I will connect with a database. But right now I want to start from scratch. So then you can start building uh, app from scratch All the designing part. You can start from scratch and your app will be created. Now when you are working with data source, of course, as I said, you can directly start from data verse or you can 
uh, create from the scratch and you can connect with the data wise. Now you have different other option to connect with your data. Like for example, if your data is there in SharePoint, it is there in Excel, it is there in other cloud, or it may be in on-premise. So you have all the options to connect with your data. As I said, you can create an app from the data of source. Here you can just designing your power app. You can customize your app, customize the properties. These are the different controls that you can just simply insert by dragging and dropping on your screen. You have gallery views, you have form views, you have different medias to be inserted on your app, like you can add images, you can add cameras, you can add buttons, barcode, text box, that all you can add here. You can add charts too, like if the chart is created in Power BI, that again can be created here. Then you have some text control, like you have label, text input, pen input, HTML text that you can insert here. Now, as I said, you have to connect two screens with each other. You can use a navigate function. This navigate function, you just have to put this function on any control, like I am clicking on any button, and then I should be switched to another screen. So by clicking on that button, I will put that function. Okay, then I will be navigated to another screen. Then lesson uh, three, now we will be starting how we can build an portal app. Now, what is a portal app? When we were talking about the model driven app and the canvas app, this was for internal facing. But if you want to build an app that will be for external facing, means if you want to include external user to use your app, then you can explore Power App. In Power App, basically, you can say it's a kind of website. Now, when I'm saying it's a website, it doesn't mean that you are going to build your website and you need to be a website developer. Again, here you have the proper support to create a website. In that website, you can connect the users by your Azure AD, or you can give users the right to use their own email ID or their own organization account ID and they can register to your portal and they will be starting using your portal app. So you can expose data versus data too. Like when I was uh, when I'm working on portal app, you can uh, you can have the data from the data verse and directly it will be accessed via your portal. You can configure your portal securities like as I said, you can configure the authentication uh the user who is registered or whether you want the access should be only from the azure ad that again you can define and accordingly you can use it so we are done with module 4 2 and uh, we will be covering the lab for the same okay so uh anyone any doubt regarding the same about module 4 any questions or any query? You can raise your hand. I will unmute you. Yes, anyone, any question, any query? Okay, I will be sharing few important links.
Okay, so any questions, any doubt? No one? Because now we are going to take a break for one hour. That will be a lunch break. And after the lunch break, I will be starting with labs. So that our, uh, like whatever we have discussed, it would be more clear. You would be able to relate your concepts more clearly. I think we should, we should take break if you do not have any doubt. So I'm just starting my timer. Okay, so just have a break, lunch break, and we'll come back. <laughs> 